Okay, hi there. I have watched a video of my family making pomegranate jelly. Uh, it was our yearly tradition over and over and over again every single year. And I figured I would make a new one because that was back in the early 90s and it's a little dated. Now in that video they squeezed the juice, cut them off the tree, and then washed them and cut them and squeeze the juice all that day. I'm working with frozen juice that I froze last October. And here it is, the 1st of July, and I've run out of jelly, so it's time to do some more. I'm going to show you what we start with. Okay, sorry, I'm shaky and tired. It's 11 o'clock at night. So first of all, in the sink I have my jars. Now for one batch of jelly, I'm going to use, personally, um, two of big jars and three of the half pints. So we've got two pints, three half pints, and I have the lids in the hot water. These are all in hot, hot water. I've washed them by hand, and they're going to sit there because when you pour hot jelly into jars that aren't warm, you risk breaking the jars. Okay, so this is a batch that I just finished. Also, when you are done with the batches, don't touch the jars. It's really hot. It's going to burn your hands. Okay, so over here on the stove, I have a nice big pot, and I put my juice already in there. The original recipe that I have from my grandmother calls for five cups of sugar and three and a half cups of juice. That is way too sweet for me, for my kids too. So I've cut it down to four and a half cups of juice and four cups of sugar which is still a lot. I don't think we need any more than that. Now, for the pectin, we use MP CP, and my grandmother would turn over in her grave if I used anything else. You cannot use just the regular sure gel, even though this is now made by sure gel. It has to be in CP. So, use that, and once you pour the juice into the pot, you put the pectin in. This is before you've heated it up. Make sure your pot and your spoon are nice and clean. If they're not, your jelly's not going to set up. So now, if I can put the phone down without dropping it, okay, I'm going to go ahead and add the pectin to the juice. And basically, you can just kind of pour it in. It doesn't have to have jelly popping behind me. You don't have to. Um, or didn't flow fast or anything else, just dump it in there, shake it all in, and then start to stir. You can stir it up a little bit. Sorry, my kitchen's a mess. And I'm going to turn it on to high to start with. So I've got the pectin in there. I am going on high heat, I'm just mixing the pectin all together with the juice. Now, my next step is going to be after this starts boiling. I have to wait until this mess boils, which would be more probable if I had it on high heat. Um, once this boils, I'm going to let it boil a rolling or roiling boil, as my family likes to call it, for at least 30 seconds. And now I'm wondering if I did that on the last batch. I think I did. Once it has roiling or royally boiled for 30 seconds, I am going to add in my entire four cup vat of sugar. And then I keep it fairly high heat and go ahead and let it warm up again because once you pour the sugar in, it takes the fire way down. Um, so once the sugar's in and it's boiling again, and it's got to be a full rolling boil, then you let it boil for two minutes. Put a timer on. It has to be at least two minutes. If you go a little bit over, it's not too bad. It's going to start to burn, though. Be careful, too. Once it starts boiling after you put the sugar in, it is very prone to boil over. You have to kind of keep watching it and stirring the whole time. So once it has boiled for two minutes, then you turn off the heat, go get your jars out of the hot water, dry them out as quickly as you can. I usually turn them upside down and put them on, you can see I've spilled some, um, some kitchen towels so I don't scald my countertops. And 
they have to be spaced out a little bit because have you ever tried pouring things from a big Dutch oven or pot into little tiny jars and they're right next to each other? It makes a mess. So space them out a little bit and then um, there's going to be some air bubble goop, we call it, on top of the jelly. If you want to fix that, you can put a teeny tiny like quarter teaspoon of butter in it and it'll go away. But if the jelly sits too long, you run the risk of the butter going bad. And then you're going to have like mold on top of it. You don't want that. This is precious stuff here. Red process. So, um, after you pour it, and it's not easy to pour, so don't be upset if you spill some because I do every single time. Um, you pour it in those jars, then you go get your, your lids, which are in hot water, see, underneath the jars, and uh, dry those off, set them on top of the jars once the jelly's in them. Then you can go find your rings, do I have rings around here somewhere, your rings, rinse those off too, and you have to be very careful when you're putting the rings on the jars with the lids because it is hot as hell, so use some sort of pot holder otherwise you're going to regret it. And then you can loosely put them on, finger tight, and then when you get ready to screw them on tighter, use a pot holder. It's, it's gonna save your fingers. It sucks to burn your fingers on hot jelly, because it's been boiling. There's a reason. So after you get all that done, you're going to have these lovely jars of dark, dark red pomegranate jelly and they are delicious, so, um, yeah, I hope everybody that watches this gets the help they need, because there's not a lot of direction out there for pomegranate jelly, so, bye!